This episode of Gadget was brought to you by the University Catholic Center, the California Province of the Society of Jesus, and Gateway, the beauty and power of what? Powerful, stylish, and affordable. The new line of Gateway M-Series notebooks on this episode of Gadget. Hello, and welcome back to Gadget at thetechstop.net. It's a place where it's always time to get your geek on. I'm your host, Father Robert Balliser of the Society of Jesus. I'm a member of the California province of the Jesuits. We're the largest religious order in the Catholic Church. And we're here again in the Center for Apostolic Technology at the University Catholic Center on the campus of the University of Hawaii. Now, I want to send a shout-out to all of those who have been checking the website, who have been going to our YouTube page, who have been checking out our channel, who have been logging in time and time again to show their support. Thank you so very much. Please keep watching. Please keep clicking. Please tell your friends about us. We're trying to grow this as large as we possibly can so that we can bring you more and more gadget goodness. We've got a notebook review for you today. Now, this is a departure from Gadget's regular MO. We don't normally do complete systems, but we're trying to change. We're trying to evolve, and we've had enough of our viewers, enough of the people writing us comments, writing us email messages, leaving us voicemails, telling us that they want to see some of the gonzo stuff. They want to see gaming systems. They want to see great laptops. They want to see where their performance and the price will come from. Well, we're listening to you, so we're going to bring you the technology that you want to see. We've got this unit from Gateway. Now... Anyone who's been in the game for a while, who's been in IT, knows that Gateway has a reputation for building dependable, reliable, high-performance, affordable computers. Well, at least about 15 years ago. Now, Gateway's reputation has slipped. You see, they were one of the first to offer some seriously solid, well-built, budget computers for the people going to college, for professionals, for those who just wanted a box that worked. But since then, their reputation has kind of eroded. I mean, as players like Dell and Compaq and HP and even Apple have pulled it together, Gateway has slowly slid further and further down. Their acquisition of e-machines was sort of the, the pinnacle of Gateway crying out for help. Well, recently they were bought by Acer, and that was sort of a mixed response. People didn't really know if that would increase their ability to compete in, in a very competitive marketplace. Well, the XHD3000 shows you that, well, yeah, they're coming out with some new products. And actually, the M-Series of Notebooks is a, a glimmer and a hope that maybe they found some special sauce. The Gateway M-Series of Notebooks is built around this... 15.4-inch ultrabright WXGA LCD widescreen monitor, which is capable of displaying up to 1280 by 800 resolution. All of the laptops in the M-Series include a built-in 1.3 megapixel camera, a slot-loaded optical drive, memory card reader, express card slot, biometric fingerprint scanner, a HDMI port, a 10100 Ethernet port, integrated Wi-Fi, a SATA 300 hard drive slot, and a weight of about 6.3 pounds. The M-Series is available in Garnet Red, Merlot, Pacific Blue, Silver, and my personal favorite, Arctic Bloom, which Gateway describes as delicate wildflowers on a background of icy turquoise blue. Whatever you might call it, the important thing to remember is that this is an infused color treatment, not a sticker and not some cheap plastic snap-on panel. The Gateway infuse process gives the coloring a smooth metallic finish that somehow manages to avoid fingerprints and is made to last. The M-Series starts at $750 for the entry-level M151S, but Gateway sent us their 151X, which seems to be always out of stock, with an Intel Core 2 Duo T5450 CPU, a dedicated ATA HD 2400XD graphics adapter with 256 megabytes of dedicated memory, draft and wireless, Bluetooth, and a 250 gigabyte SATA hard drive for a grand total of $1099. The first thing that struck us about the 151 is the uncluttered and yet functional design. The notebook has a full-size keyboard and a large touchpad that includes a scroll bar for quickly navigating web pages. 
The front of the unit houses the power, Wi-Fi, headphone and speaker jacks, as well as all of the indicator lights and the biometric fingerprint scanner. The left side of the 151 has two USB ports, the 10100 Ethernet port, and an HDMI port for those who want to easily connect their 151 to a HDTV. The left side also houses the express card slot, the 5-in-1 memory card reader, and the hardware on and off switch for the wireless subsystem. It's a nice touch for those who want an easy way to toggle their wireless on and off. The right side of the 151 houses the slot-loaded optical drive as well as one more USB 2.0 port. The nice thing about this drive is that it actually runs really quietly as opposed to some other slot-loaded drives that I've played with in the past. The back of the notebook is sparse with only the power connector, a VGA port for external video, the RJ11 modem port, and a Kensington lock port. The keyboard and control panel are also very well designed with big buttons to control power, multimedia functions, and a touch-sensitive slider that can raise and lower your volume. It's very easy to use and uh, quite aesthetically pleasing. As an extra touch, the 151 has this little button right here, which when pressed will allow the user to instantly access Windows Media Center. This is a nice touch for anyone who wants quick access to their movies, their recorded TV shows, music, and pretty much any other media that they might be storing on their Windows Media PC. The screen on the 151 is, well, beautiful. Breathtaking almost. We couldn't really find anything wrong with it. There was no color drop-off, no brightness variations. In fact, the only thing that some of our reviewers uh, mentioned was that the super glossy screen, which does sort of bring out the richness and the textures of the, of the images, it made it a bit difficult to read in bright sunlight. But again, that's personal preference, and that's uh, typical of all the screens that have that sort of glossy coat. Performance-wise, the 151 really surprised us. We figured that it would be a moderate performer, bogged down by Vista and its entry-level heritage. However, when we started playing with the machine, it was obvious that it was far better than we had assumed. In PC Mark Vantage, the 151 scored 2628 PC Marks, which was a good deal more than the slightly more expensive baseline machines that we used from Dell and HP. To test real-world performance, we rendered the same 2GB file on our production desktop and on the 151. The Gateway machine rendered over twice as fast. So a few final thoughts about the 151X from Gateway. I really like this machine. With a battery life that stretched from about two and a half hours at maximum consumption to uh, almost five hours when we turned on all the power saving features, with performance that kind of blew us away, with a design that's nice and solid, it's a nice notebook for anyone who wants something to begin with or wants something to replace one of their aging machines. Now, we have to say that Gateway has a lot of catching up to do, not in terms of the hardware that they designed, because both the XHD3000 and this 151 that we've received have been fantastic pieces of hardware. But we also know that Gateway has a reputation that it has to overcome. In the past few years, with that slipping of their quality, they've left a lot of people angry at the quality of their products and perhaps their pricing. Well, they're working on that, and with Acer's help and with their new restructured formation of the company, they're trying to get great products at good prices and uh, rebuild the reputation that they had back in the 90s. The biggest complaint I have is actually not with the notebook, but it's with the Gateway website. I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like the fact that you can't customize it. I mean, when I'm dealing with HP, when I'm dealing with Dell, when I'm dealing with Alienware, I like the ability to sort of pick and choose my components to, to easily pimp out or strip down the system the way that I want it. And the Gateway site really isn't there yet. I'm not sure if that's the way that they run their internal channels. I'm not sure if that's just the, the, the way that they've decided to do business and, and have a, a, a few set models. But uh, I would have loved to be able to take this system and you know just put on the options that I want to see how inexpensive or how performance oriented I could make it. If you're looking for a new PC, if you want something that's stylish, that will set you apart, something that is solid, that will last, you know, something that you could use as equally well with typical games or with your word processing or your web surfing, you might want to check out the M-series of notebooks from Gateway. It might just change your mind 
about the company made up of cow spots. Well, that's all the time we have for this episode of Gadget. If you want to find out more about our association with Gateway, about Gateway products, and about any of the products that we've ever reviewed on Gadget, you can always go to our website at www.thetechstop.net. Click on the Gadget tab and you'll be able to download all of our episodes in high resolution. If you want to send us an email, you can always write us at gadget at thetechstop.net. Well, I've been your host, Father Robert Ballas here. This has been the Center for Apostolic Technology. And remember, there's no Uber Geek without you. <laughs>